Welcome. All right, so you made it to the summary for uh, multiplying and dividing, uh, I'm sorry, just multiplying our rational expressions. Actually, multiplying and dividing rational expressions. So I just want to kind of summarize a little bit um, of the process that we're going to be working through. And, and then as well as, you know, some of the things that, you know, as you work through uh, the, your worksheet, some of the things that you want to make sure you remember as far as our process. And, you know, some helpful, some tips and tricks, as well as some common mistakes that I see through working with students in my own class. So, again, when we're multiplying, um, multiplying and dividing rational expressions, the main important thing that we always want to do is, you know, one is using our division property of equality to simplify them. And sometimes we automatically have to multiply or divide first of all, but more often than not, we have to simplify them by using factoring. So I didn't write that down as one of like the common mistakes or tips and tricks, but ex we always want to be able to try to rewrite your rational expressions in simplified terms before you apply any process as far as multiplication or division. Now remember, when dividing rational expressions, I also just like to think of dividing fractions. If I'm going to divide this fraction, commonly what we can do is with the same operation would be to multiply by the reciprocal. And when we're doing rational expressions, it's the same thing, but we're just going to be reciprocating a rational, uh, rational expression that's going to have a polynomial in the numerator and the denominator rather than um, just some integers. So, Going into kind of like some tips and tricks, um, the main thing that I like to you know look at is always go and look into factoring, and we factor out by our GCF, factor out using uh, factoring trinomials, look for difference of two squares, look for perfect square trinomials, um, look for the difference of two cubes, um, <clears throat> or the difference of cubes. So always be looking for the you know, difference of two cubes. Always be looking for those special factoring techniques. And then the common tips and tricks is using our division property of equality. And again, what that means is, you know, if I had a variable divided by a variable, we know that's one. If I have a number divided by itself, we know that's one. And that falls true if I have an expression. x minus 2 divided by x minus 2, that also divides to 1. So once we have applied our operation, we we're going to want to use our division property of equality, um, just sorry, our division property to simplify them. Now let's kind of go through some common mistakes that I see. I see a lot of students that want to divide across addition or subtraction. And so what they'll do is they'll say, oh, well, x divides by x, so that goes to 1. But that is not the case because what this expression is actually saying is x divided into x, which is 1, as well as x divides into 2. So this x divides into both of them. We cannot simplify that. Now, the common mistake, this mistake that students usually mix this up with, if I said x times x minus 2 divided by x, now we can divide out those x's because you're dividing across multiplication. So it works for going across multiplication and division. It does not work going across between addition and subtraction. The next common mistake is I just gave a little example of my um, properties of exponents. Um, a lot of times when we're going to be multiplying, we're going to have some numbers and we're going to have to multiply them. And this really can go through with subtracting, dividing, anything with properties of exponents. But I just gave one example. Just remember when you're multiplying two of these, you multiply their coefficients, which is going to give us 6. And then when I multiply a variable times a variable, it's going to be x. And then I add their exponents, which is 1 and 1, so it would be x squared. So I gave one example, but really a common mistake is not applying the properties of exponents correctly. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Congratulations on finishing the course. I hope I helped you out. And please let me know if you have any further questions. Thanks.